I suppose I'll start with, the, with, the, with Iraq, um, which was best described by, has best been captured by under its old regime form, a brilliant author, an Iraqi English, half Iraqi, half English author called uh, Kanan Makia, who had to write for a long time under a protective pseudonym of Samir Al Khalil and wrote a, a, a tremendous book called The Republic of Fear, which is the best uh, forward description that one could have of the regime of, of Saddam Hussein. If you can get hold of it, and you can, if you go back to look at the uh, program that Kanan Makia and Hodding Carter once did for uh, public broadcasting, you can actually get to see one of the most chilling, annihilatingly chilling, actually, videos ever made in the 20th century. It shows the moment at which Saddam Hussein, the actual moment at which Saddam Hussein uh, seized power in Iraq for himself. The, the, the central committee of the Ba'ath Party, perhaps a hundred people, are sitting in a very formal array in a conference room. And Saddam Hussein is chairing them from a podium, smoking a large cigar. And suddenly, without warning to anyone, in is dragged between two guards and in chains, a, a broken man, a man who is obviously physically and mentally been utterly uh, destroyed. His personality has been evacuated. And uh, prodded a bit, he stumbles through a confession uh, that implicates himself and others um, in a plot to destroy the Iraqi Republic, to remove the regime of the Ba'ath Party, and to um, uh, ruin the Iraqi revolution, the, uh, the counter-revolution. Having confessed for himself and having begged to be executed for his crimes, and having been reduced to a state of complete abjection, the man then says, the following members of this central committee were with me in this plot and he begins to read out their names slowly <clears throat> and as this happens you can see it the uh, guards move every time a name is mentioned and they, they grab the member of the central committee and lead him out of the door and after about a dozen of these the, there's panic uh, sheer animal panic starts to spread among those who haven't yet be named, and in the, in the hope that they're not going to be, they start screaming and jumping up and saying, glory to Saddam Hussein, our leader, all praise to him, uh, the sun, the moon, the stars of Iraq, um, praying that it won't be them who have called this, nothing, nothing makes any difference, the, the harvest just goes on randomly, they're taken off the chessboard and taken out, until half of them are gone, and the rest are just limp and done for, and, and almost dying with relief that it wasn't them. Uh, it's the most extraordinary uh, live show of a, of a real, for keeps, political purge that you'll ever see. And then there's the second half, uh, where the surviving half are told to go out in the yard and are given guns and are told to shoot the convicted half. Now they're in the plot. Now, they're, now they are cemented to the leadership. Now, Kanan Makir in his book says correctly, he says, Hitler wouldn't have thought of that. Stalin didn't even think of that, and he thought about these things a lot, about how to get mem one member of the Central Committee to betray another member and keep them all guessing so that you're the ultimate beneficiary. But, but this, it's often, I think, very, very, very hard for people who live in civilized countries, democratic countries, to, to understand what it would be like to live even a day um, under a regime that was like this. I used, to re I used to find in arguments about Iraq that I knew right away um, when someone didn't know what they were talking about. And the dead giveaway would always be when they would say, all right, I agree, Saddam Hussein is a bad guy. I said, that means you don't know, you don't know anything about it, if that's what you think. You don't know what it would be like to be sitting at home wondering where your daughter was and finding out because the police came around and banging on the door handed you a video while they stood there, of her being raped by their colleagues, just to show you who was boss. The word evil, which I began with, I think does need a bit of justification. Uh, many people think that to use, even use the word evil is sort of naive or, or morally too judgmental. Or um, You know what I'm driving at, uh, too simplistic. And yet it's somehow a word without which we cannot do. 
uh, the person who spills their cup of coffee in the morning on a copy of the party paper that has the leader's picture on it and everyone in the cafe goes completely quiet you just desecrated a picture of the leader the police are on their way now you've just made the biggest mistake of your life um, I haven't started with with Iraq uh, I haven't begun to tell you what it's like um, the nearest I can come from personal experience would be I suppose uh, being present when a mass grave uh, in the Shia districts of the south was being opened um, Hila near Babylon um, just after the intervention in uh, 2003 and I was there I'd, I'd gone with a group of my fellow reporters and um, the temperature in Iraq at midday at around that time goes well above 100 and you have to be coated in sunscreen at all times and you're coated in sweat anyway and it gets in your hair and in your clothes and on your face. You're, you're sort of covered in slime, in effect. Protective slime. And that's fine until the wind gets up a bit as the mass grave is being excavated and you find that you're being uh, covered in a coat of powder, grey powder, which is made of people. It's the, the, the filth and the smut of people who've been buried en masse for a long time are just being dug up and are being now blown around in a, in a grave. And kind of, and you, if you want to feel dirty, if you want to feel dirtied up by the experience of fascism, try finding that you're 12 hours away from a shower and you can't get dead person out of your hair or off your face. There's nothing you can do about it. You're stuck with it. You're tainted. You're polluted and you're living in a country or visiting a country in this case, which is digging itself slowly out of a, a general, a generalized mass grave. <laughs>